Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am looking at the Kerbal system. In fact, I'm looking at an enhanced Kerbal system. We have the Planet Factory mod, which has added a number of bodies to the system. We can see here Centaur, Inaccessible, and Ascension. Ascension's interesting because it's on this highly eccentric orbit, but I'm just going to tab through the various objects until we get to the new ones. This mod uh, takes a lot of memory, but it adds a whole bunch of new objects. Now, the first one is a place called Ablate, which, as you can see, is really close to the sun. 60 uh, or it's about 20 uh, it's one twentieth of the distance of Kerbal to the sun if I uh, or curb into the sun if you time accelerate here you can actually see this going oh, going around the sun very very quickly it goes around the sun in but a few days if you let it and uh, I can't quite see it there but there it is it is a tiny, 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 tiny object. If I zoom in, we can actually get a closer look at it. It is, well, it's obviously being blasted by the sun. This close, it gets a really nice view, but one side is blasted, the other side is a little more um, irregular. It's 13 kilometers across, but it, its density is much higher than it should be. Its uh, surface gravity is 0.36 g. It says they left this one in the furnace too long. Moving on, we come to Ascension. I could just belch on this tiny little comet and vaporize your entire species. It's sort of a threat, you see. So yeah, this is a comet. It's a uh, similar in size to a blade. It's 14 kilometers. Uh, the surface gravity is, again, particularly high for some reason. Uh, that's because it is based on Minmus, I believe, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, most of these pla these objects are basically derived from other planets in the game, so they have some weird characteristics which they share. Uh, if you if the thing doesn't load correctly, you will see the other planets. Anyway, moving on, we have inaccessible. In inaccessible is well, okay, it's a long way out, but that isn't the reason that it's inaccessible. The reason is if I uh, just even start it. 10 times time warp this 15 kilometer object rotates quite fast in fact it rotates so fast that you cannot land on that equator now i guess if you have Kerbal attachment system maybe you can fire a harpoon into the ground and like reel yourself in or maybe you can land and uh, have rocket motors push you down or you could just go to the poles which i shall try doing later uh, what do they say about this? For the survivalist, way out in the boonies, all kind of defense angles. Booyah! Now, Centaur is a... Uh, oh, it's got some nice rings. This is the first time we've seen rings in uh, KSP. They're totally non-transparent. You'll see those up close later, but it's nice to have them nevertheless. It's supposed to be based on Polyphemus from Avatar, and uh, what is it? The name translates into Kerbal as ratness or to, or to stand. Significant? I doubt it. Uh, so it's the same size as Jewel. It has an atmosphere, pretty much uh, similar characteristics. And uh, surface gravity, well, surface gravity appears to be uh, lower, oddly enough. That's very confusing. These numbers make no sense to me. And now it, of course, has a whole planetary system around it. And uh, let's take a look. Thud. Now, Thud, well, it is well named because its surface gravity is 3.14 G. Uh, it uh, is, has higher surface gravity than Tylo, higher surface gravity than, um, than Eve, and it's roughly the same size as the planet Kerbin. From the surface, the escape velocity is 6 kilometers per second. If you thought that landing on Tylo was too easy, this is for you. Uh, apparently, if you look around somewhere, there's um, some secret uh, information in, in, inscribed on the surface. Maybe we can actually time accelerate and catch this. Oh, no, never mind. There's supposedly a secret message in some location of this, but I can't find it for the life of me. I've seen pictures of it from other people, you see. Well, nevertheless, let us go on to the next target. And we have Erin. Erin looks a lot like Lath, but even more squirrely, I guess. Lots of little lakes that rather than a giant ocean. It has a little bit of an ice cap, and uh, 
Yeah, again, same size, 500, you know, kilometers. It has roughly similar atmosphere, roughly similar gravity, and it's told nice views and uh, great boating. If you can bring a boat out here, of course, that does seem a bit silly now that I think of it, but not silly enough that people won't try it. And orbiting this, we have a little thing called POC. POC, 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 POC. Great for stream sports. Decent views of Centaur. Look at that. That's a nice angle on that. And yeah, it's a slightly bigger than... It's about the same size as some medium-sized bodies. It's like 60 kilometers, low gravity, just, you know, your perfect kind of small moon. Moving on, we come to Ringle, which is a moon with rings. And, okay, we have weird issues with these things being too inclined, but I'm not going to complain about that physics too much. I'm just really glad that these people have added extra planets. Now, Ringle, of course, the gold standard, the best views in the system. You have my word on that. Uh, yeah, so it's a small body, roughly the size of Kerbin. Uh, slightly lower gravity, but once again, no atmosphere. So landing on this takes um, some effort and means you need to burn a lot of fuel. Skelton. Now, Skelton is, well, the interesting thing about Skelton is this giant mountain sticking off the side of it. Let's just rotate things around. And there we go. Look at that. It's like Olympus Mons. It's rather too big. And to be honest, for stability reasons, a mountain that size would move to the equator. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah, it has a low surface gravity, 320 kilometer radius, but it has quite a thick atmosphere. So this is interesting. It's like Eve in that it has a thick atmosphere, but it has lower gravity, which makes it a slightly different challenge. Uh, also, the flavor text, funny red planet. Go figure, red skeleton. I, I don't know, look him up, red skeleton. Famous, you know, sitcom comedian, not sitcom, sketch comedian. Home of the legendary Mount Crag Ski Area, future home of Herring's Wall Memorial and Strip Club. And that's the end. Let's actually try landing on some things. Well, we've seen the view from, uh, you know, 30,000 feet or whatever. Let's get some actual close-up on some of these planets. Now, Inaccessible. Inaccessible is named because it's very hard to get to, but particularly because it rotates so fast. Now, uh, I've just used, you know, a save file edit to drop this lander out near the planet, or, yeah, near the, the... It is a planet, actually, yes. Near the planet is a tiny planet, and it rotates at an insane rate and has a rather high gravity, but... Um, yeah, so here's what I'm trying to do here. I, if you notice, I'm in surface mode, and I'm trying to actually kill my orbital velocity, but killing my orbital velocity is slowing me down with respect to the surface of this planetoid. The surface of the planetoid is not just moving at orbital velocity. In fact, if I turn this around and I'm going to get closer and then I'm going to try and synchronize velocities with the surface as we get closer. There we go. Turn around, fire up those engines and you'll see very quickly I'm trying to slow myself down with respect to the surface. Yeah, 175 meters per second below what the surface is rotating at, and I am at escape velocity, right? This thing is spinning way too fast to land on the equator. If, if you have, yeah, if you want, you can probably burn downwards and hold yourself onto the surface using jet rocket engines or whatever, or you could use something like Kerbal Attachment System. I'm sure there will be somebody doing that really soon. Uh... Assuming you can actually get this to work with other mods, because I've not had much luck getting it to work with my mods. Anyway, the place that we can actually try to land it is, of course, the poles, right? The poles are rotating more slowly, and therefore, it should be possible to basically land as long as I'm close enough to the pole. And uh, if you get too far out, you'll get more and more force, or perceived force, right? Because it... It is a phantom force which only exists when you transform into the rotating reference frame. That's what centrifugal force is, right? Long story. You really... Just just don't worry about physicists that say there's no such thing as centrifugal force. As far as you're concerned, if you're in a rotating fre reference frame, that force is really enough, right? <laughs> anyway, 
so yeah i'm just gonna bring it down you notice i i shifted into a highly eccentric orbit so i could perform the inclination change the inclination change of course being most efficiently performed when you're moving as slowly as possible so i'm hoping to just drop straight onto the pole and you know touch down and hopefully i won't get dragged out toward the edge of the thing and spun off into deep space at escape velocity because that would really ruin my day seriously i've come all this way it would be a shame if it just rejected me right away without really uh paying attention notice how the spacecraft is rotating with the planet i think the way this is done is that uh the whole thing is a, a rotating reference frame as well and so during time acceleration these things are spinning as well okay so i'm more or less falling towards the surface at about 90 plus meters per second um and so we're gonna kill that once we get closer but we're gonna get closer still yeah i i don't know if this is the best way to look at it from this angle uh you don't see the stars rotating so you're not having to you're not perceiving the extra external rotation um I mean, yeah, from this point of view, it's like there's no other reference frame. The only reference frame is the rotating reference frame. And, uh, yeah, you know, translating between reference frames is a big, important thing to learn. Because <laughs> everybody has their own point of reference. Oh, that's great. So I, I tried to uh, kill my vertical velocity, and instead uh, the velocity vector disappeared, and I'm now traveling sideways rather quickly 40 meters per second relative to the surface no idea what i'm moving relative to anything else at uh relatively close to the surface now 2.5 kilometers i i don't know how low this surface will be i expect less than a kilometer but now i'm now i'm down to 17 18 meters per second I actually the acceleration on this thing considering it is a 13 kilometer body uh, the acceleration, the, the gravitational acceleration is rather large, which leads me to the obvious conclusion that this is, in fact, an alien spacecraft. This is no planet that mysteriously found itself rotating faster than gravity would allow. No, no. This is an artificial construct, which was placed here to uh, spy on the Kerbals and their space program. Probably placed by some, you know, pink-skinned, five-fingered aliens or something like that. Who knows? Ugh. I bet they don't have a green bone in their body. Okay, so, but we're almost here, and it, it just is weird because, like, as, as soon as you stop thrusting uh, at an angle, you start to drift sideways. So it's best to just, like, yeah, get it down. Get it down, and we're, we're there. Well, that's rather nice. Look at that. That is the planet inaccessible in all its glory. Obviously not inaccessible to asteroids which have hit its surface and made some nice pock marks in it. Although, rotating at that speed, I would suspect that the craters at the equator would be more elongated. Well, uh, yeah, we've come all this way, even if we did cheat to get here. Let's go EVA! And immediately, yeah... <laughs> he jumps forward and slides sideways. There's these phantom forces that are pushing him around. And again, the phantom forces are really the result of a transformation to a rotating reference frame. I, I've always thought there could be something done in a game about you know transforming between reference frames. Not mathematically, but exploiting the behavior or whatever of a, a rotating system to really uh, screw people over. Actually, I'd like to see docking with Rama. Anyway, let's uh, try and land on a blate. A blate being a planet so close to the sun that it is ablating away. Yes, ablation being the process by which uh, stuff essentially evaporates under heat or, you know, stresses or whatever. Um, well, if you read Ian M. Banks, the last book, the last sci-fi book was Hydrogen Sonata, and uh, that actually opens around a planet which is very close to a sun called, or the, this planet is called Ablate. So uh, same, same difference, same concept. Look at those rocks! Okay, man, I tell you, whoever, uh, I guess not only can you mess around with the 
uh, surface textures, but you can also mess around with the surface scatter. This is this is rather crazy here. But look, aha, excellent on the surface. And the gravity here is again very high. In fact, it's so high that jet plaques will not work. Or they will work, but you won't be able to get off the surface with them. Okay, what do we got? Come on, get out of there. We need you to get out there and do some flag business because flags are cool. Flags are the way we judge you guys. If you don't hit your flag quota, then you will not be getting special access to this to the astronauts club. No, no. Yeah, all these things are derived from existing planets in the game. They're you know the the planets use something called the planetary quad square. I don't know something system. Okay, um, the the new hot hot hotness. The new hotness. That's of course a perfect name. Um, yeah, planetary quad. God, I forget what it is. It's it's basically the the planets are made up of six squares arranged in a cube that get get to uh, adjust everything. Yeah, it's really cool to see the sun floating around in the sky like that. If we time accelerate, you can see it kind of librating above and be up below the the galactic plane. Okay, so anyway, that is uh, where I'm going to leave this. Uh, we'll just leave you with a little view from this planet orbiting Eren and Centaur. It is the Planet Factory mod. It may or may not be available in the forums, but take a look around. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.